a day in the life as a private chef. After the client and I decide on a menu, I'll put in a pickup order at my grocery store to make it really easy on myself. And thankfully, I have amazing friends and family to help me with all of this. So after bringing in all of the groceries, I'll start cleaning the kitchen. You guys like my little outfit? This is how Florida chefs do it. They just wear shorts. Okay, so now we're sanitizing the counters, and then, of course, I always start with a big glass of water because I forget to drink water while I'm working. This is my trusty notebook, and she goes everywhere that I go. I put every little detail in this notebook. So this is the day before the event. What I'll do is I'll take the menu, write it down in that notebook, and then think about all of the components that I can prep day before. So the day of, I don't have to worry about any knife work. I can just focus on the cooking. So right now I'm working with lemongrass. I'm just cutting it up, bruising it with a meat hammer, and then I'll just boil this in some sugar and water to make a lemongrass infused simple syrup and used in the basil lemongrass wine spritzer. I'm catering a baby shower and they requested Asian food, which is perfect because that's my specialty. I'm cutting up eight zucchinis and six bell peppers, for my Thai red curry. I always get the question, how do I portion for catering events? And let me tell you, eight years ago when I started catering, I was wildly off. I was always fearful of not having enough food, so I had a lot of waste. I'm always amazed how little people eat at gatherings. I don't know if they're embarrassed to go get a second plate or if they're too busy talking with their friends. Throughout my catering career, I've done plenty of events, ranging from a small intimate dinner with two all the way to a huge catering event of 1,200 people. So I've kind of got the portioning down to a science now. Now I'm just slicing up my green and red cabbage for my Asian chicken lettuce wraps. After I'm done with that task, I can check it off on my list in my notebook, which is a great feeling. I store all of my prep goods in Ziploc baggies. It doesn't take up too much space in the fridge and easy cleanup. You know that amazing ginger dressing that you get at Asian restaurants? Well, it's super easy to make. Throw some carrots, celery, onion, garlic, ginger, rice vinegar, and soy sauce into a food processor, and boom, easy as pie. Now just cutting up some garlic and onions. Once you learn how to cut an onion the right way, your life will be forever changed. If you're interested in learning cooking basics, I offer cooking classes once a month for only $2.99. For more information, you can click the link in my bio, check the description, or the captions. So we're doing our Asian chicken lettuce wraps now. Into the pot, I put some sesame oil, garlic, ginger, lemongrass, my chicken, and the cabbage. Like I said, I like to do all of my knife work the day before the event, so now I'm just doing all of my garnishes and storing those in Ziploc baggies so they're easy to pull out of the fridge when I need them. Now we're done with produce prep, we can move on to protein prep, and this is just a way to prevent cross-contamination. I take food safety extremely seriously in my kitchen. Now here's a kitchen hack. If you're wanting to cut proteins really thin, I would suggest putting it into the freezer for about an hour, and it allows you to make really thin cuts. So I'm slicing my beef for my Thai red curry, and now I'm opening all of my coconut milk, which is a lot of coconut milk, and my bamboo shoots. Thai red curry is probably my favorite dish to cook. When I first started cooking on the yacht, I told the owners that Thai food was my specialty. They said that they really never had much Thai food, but they'd be willing to try my Thai red curry. And guess what? It is now the most requested dish to make on the yacht. I have my Thai red curry recipe on my subscription and membership pages. If you're interested in joining, check the link in my bio, description, or in the comments. Since this is the day before the event, I'm making the base of the curry and then I'll add my vegetables tomorrow because I don't want them to get mushy. Another top performing recipe on the yacht are these coconut macaroons. These freeze really well, so I would always keep a stash in the freezer and whenever a guest had a sweet tooth, I would just pull them out. I'm not much of a baker, but these coconut macaroons have never failed me. Egg whites, shredded coconut, sugar, vanilla extract, and some salt. Can't get any easier than that. Recipe is in my subscription and membership page. The most technical part of this recipe is that you have to whip the egg whites to stiff peaks. Then you just mix everything together, and I like to use an ice cream scoop to get the perfect cookies. Throw them into a 325 degree oven until they're slightly golden brown on the outside. It's now 11 o'clock at night. I finished all my prep for the day, and we'll get back to it tomorrow morning. Okay, good morning. It's 7 a.m. and look at those tired eyes. First thing I need is coffee. There's no getting around that. I will have a caffeine headache for the whole day if I don't drink this. Our coconut macaroons cooled overnight, so now I'm just drizzling it with some chocolate. Halfway through, I realized a piping bag was the way to go, so I will only serve the pretty ones. Then I threw some rice noodles into a bowl of water to get those soaking. Now I'm making the pad thai sauce, and it's a beautiful mix of sweet, sour, and savory. It was quite an adventure to make this pad thai sauce. 
The key ingredient is tamarind. I checked three of my local Asian markets and they didn't have tamarind. So what did I do? I called up a local Asian restaurant and I said, hey there, do you have tamarind concentrate? And they said, what? I said, may I speak with your chef? So I talked to the chef. I said, hi, I'm a local chef in the area. I can't find tamarind and can I purchase it from you? He was a little confused with this conversation because I doubt he had any conversation like this before, but I got it and the day was saved. Okay, back to the catering event. I'm now packing up all of the ingredients and equipment. I'll make sure everything's wrapped in saran wrap and packed into these bins so it doesn't move around in the car. A big challenge of catering is transportation of food and keeping the integrity of the food since it's not gonna be served immediately. So I did partial cooking at the client's house to keep the food as fresh as it can be. So I loaded up the car with the help of my wonderful parents and we made it to the client's house and set up the buffet. I'll just bring you guys down the line. We have our Asian chicken lettuce wraps, sweet Thai chili edamame, pad Thai, and I usually garnish with bean sprouts, but there's a pregnant woman here, so they can't have raw bean sprouts. So I just put them on the side. And rice to go along with our beef Thai red curry. A beautiful tower of the coconut macaroons, mango lemonade, iced tea, water, and our basil lemongrass spritzer. Oh, I didn't put the ginger salad out just yet, but it's in the fridge. So this was a drop-off catering event, meaning I set up the buffet, I go back home, let them have their party, and then return back to clean. So guess what I'm doing during the four hours that they're having their party? I'm cleaning my kitchen, which takes a while. So about the time that I'm done cleaning my kitchen, I head back to the client's house. So once you get to the client's house, you pick up all of your chafing dishes, all of your utensils, everything, and bring it home to clean. So this is a real look of what catering's like. It is a full day event, sometimes multiple days. You really gotta love this industry.